Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video we took a vulnerable function on chain. We actually implemented a contract around that. We got it working with a newer version of Solidity. We exploited that vulnerability and now we're going to take a look at how to fix that vulnerability. While this isn't a defensive course by nature, I do want to show fixes to some vulnerabilities so that you realize there are industry standard security libraries for smart contracts. In this case, we're going to take a look at the Open Zeppelin libraries. We can easily implement this by using an import line under the Pragma Solidity line. So what we're going to do is import, double quotes, and we'll paste in a library URL. So this is just the GitHub for Open Zeppelin. They have a bunch of different libraries we can use. You'll actually find this URL within the blog, so feel free to copy paste it, put a semicolon at the end, and one very, very interesting thing is if we go back to the File Explorers tab before we save it and we hit Save, you'll notice that it imported it for us. So here's the Open Zeppelin library, and here's its contracts, and then a math contracts, and it just imported the one that we actually need. Inside of this file is actually different mathematical function wrappers that will protect us from overflow errors. So we have stuff for add, we have stuff for subtract, and if we scroll down and find multiplication, this will fix the error that we had. So the way that it works is we're getting a value A and we're getting a value B sent into this function. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take A times B equals C, which is normal. But instead of just returning it down here, we have a require check before we return it. And we require that if we divide C, which is the return value of the actual operation, by A, we get back B. Now, if C was overflowed and it's a value that makes no sense anymore, and we divide it by A, we're definitely not going to get B again, so this will actually fail and let us know that we had an issue. So it's really nice to have all these functions that we can just wrap around our mathematical operations and know that it's going to work. These libraries have been looked at by a lot of people, and they should be okay. So now we're going to implement these into our contract and fix everywhere that there's math. If we take a look at that, we have a few different places. So we have multiplication here. We have subtraction, which is where we removed it before. And we also have that addition. So what we want to do is we want to update all of those values to make sure that there's no overflows in there. So let's do that now. The first instance of math is going to be this multiplication right here, which is our original overflow. And we can easily add in checks by doing safe math using dot notation and putting MUL for multiply. And then we are going to wrap these values within parentheses and put a comma between them instead of that multiplication. So now we're going to send these values into the safe math function. And we're going to do the same thing down here with the other ones that we modified earlier, just so that all of the mathematical functions in our program are protected. So this is a subtraction. So we're going to do safe math, wrap that in parentheses. Do a comma here and make sure this is dot sub. Then we're going to head down here. We have addition here. So we're going to go safe math dot add. Remove that, put a comma, and then wrap that in parentheses. We're going to hit save. We didn't get any errors, so this should be good. And now what we can do is we can test out our actual exploit again and make sure that it no longer functions. We also want to make sure that we didn't break the program as well. So let's do that now. So let's compile this again. Compile and then let's deploy it. So we're back here, JavaScript VM, good to go. We have our BEC target. We're going to delete any previous ones and we're going to hit deploy. All right, perfect. So we're going to add 2000 way and we're going to hit deposit, which should show our balance here. And this was actually on our second one, but that doesn't matter. So we'll check that our first one doesn't have a balance. 
Should be a balance of zero. Okay, perfect. Now let's do our batch transfer, which is on our second account. So what we're going to do is put in our array. And we're going to have to use the first account. And we'll put in some more quotes and put in the third account here. And then let's first put a normal value in here. So we have 2,000 way, so let's just send our 100 again. And let's make sure we're in the account where we actually have a balance. We'll double check that here. Yep, we have a balance of 2,000. So let's try our batch transfer. Okay, so our balance is 1,800 now, and one of these here should be 100. Okay, perfect. This other one should be 100. Yep, it is. So everything's functioning. We didn't actually break anything, but now what we're gonna do is test the vulnerability and make sure that our safe math functions catch the overflow and say, hey, you can't do that. So we're gonna head back to our second account again, which has the 1,800 balance, and we're gonna add in that very, very large value again. So let's copy paste that. Copy. Now this should fail because this is gonna cause an overflow condition and then it should fail out. So we're gonna hit batch transfer and we did get a um, error. It says safe math multiplication overflow. So it was caught by the safe math function because what happened is we sent in our value and when we went to this line right here where we're creating our amount, we passed our value in, we passed the number two in there for the actual number of receivers and we sent that to safe math. When safe math actually tried to do the multiplication and you know it hopped back into here and it was like, hey, our value C after this multiplication, if we divide that by A, which is our initial value that we sent in, does that equal B? And no, actually it doesn't because zero divided by that large number does not equal B. So therefore we fixed our vulnerability and we learned how to you know, import a safe math library and work with it. It's pretty easy. There's a lot of different libraries within Open Zeppelin, so I suggest you explore those on your own and see what other functionality is in there that you can use. We will look a little bit more at Open Zeppelin, especially during authorization where we check out stuff like role-based authentication. But until then, I hope you're enjoying this series so far. If you are, please like the video and share it out to your social media for other people who may be interested. In the next section, we're gonna take a look at reentrancy, where we learn how to use malicious contracts with recursive loops in order to liquidate the funds within a contract. Until then, I hope you have a good week and I'll see you there.